Kevin. Um, please bear with me because I've, I've got a prepared statement and I also have a lot of notes on it. Um, I'd like to start by stating that uh, I've been spending a lot of time the last couple of months trying to get some interest or stimulate interest in this community to get the MSA reimbursement rate changed. And unfortunately, uh, the interest is about slim. You know, very few people seem to be too, even understand what, what I'm talking about. But at, it, but at any rate, uh, I, would I would very much like to see both of our hospitals stay open. And um, I've entered into this fray, um, what, around April, with that intent in mind, to keep both hospitals open, because my personal opinion is whether one of the hospitals close, regardless of which, it's counterproductive and not a good decision for the community, in my opinion. Um, um, unfor unfortunately, um, the only way to keep both of them open would be to, to have the MSA Medicare reimbursement rate changed. And quite personally, I don't think that's going to happen in my lifetime. Um, um, like I said, few people realize what what it is and, and don't even care. Um, I understand that a number of, of the parcels on the deed for the Benedictine property have been deeded over to the, either the Benedictine Hospital or the church forever, which means that it would be impossible to use the facility or parts of the facilities for non-sectarian purposes. Also, if if that were to be accomplished, changes changes are would wind up we would wind up in a situation where I predict the Benedictine Hospital would wind up being in financial straits, and there somebody's going to come to us and say it's going to have to close within five years. Um, next thing, I I understand that the the Benedictine Order of Sisters have plans to completely remove themselves from the hospital uh, business, so to speak. Uh, they plan to consolidate their efforts in, in senior nursing um, care. I also understand that there's a movement afoot to dissolve the alliance. <clears throat> Add to that, there is also the problem with the certificate of need, which, which which has to be written and approved by the state of New York. Um, I don't believe that that's going to be done in a timely fashion, not at least wise to, to meet the needs of the community so that the Alliance could do what it needs to do to, to save a little money. Um, the next thing is, uh, all, of that, all of that being said, I would like to suggest that, that maybe what should happen is the Benedictine sisters should keep the hospital site as is, keep their control over it, close the hospital as a hospital, and convert it into a senior nursing home, which would fall right into their plans. And I think, from their standpoint, it would be the proper decision. Not necessarily from Ulster County standpoint, but from their standpoint. Uh, along with that, I think what should happen is the Kingston Hospital would become the sole hospital in the community, and I hope that somehow we are able to keep it open beyond about five years' time, like I said. Um, this may not be the best solution, but it's a devil advocate solution that I believe is the most practical solution for the dilemma that we are facing right now. <clears throat> a few side notes from comments that I've been listened to. Um, maybe we should take the attitude and suggest that uh, we give the powers that be, and when I say powers that be, I'm talking about the New York State Health Department, uh, the U United States Congress, and the U.S. Senate, give them an ultimatum that if they do not change the reimbursement rate for the MSA re Medicaid reimbursement by the first, excuse me, by the 31st of December, that we will close both of the hospitals. You know, these people are refusing to help us and refusing to do what is needed and that should have been needed, excuse me, that should have been done. And Kevin, Kevin knows this 
as well as I do because he served on the legislature and we've had, Ulster County Legislature has had this problem for over 30 years. And as a result of that problem, the Ulster County Legislature decided that they're gonna sell the, the county infirmary, which I, I think is another big mistake. Um, uh, excuse me. Okay. The other, the, uh, along, along with the situation, maybe some kind of an arrangement could be made if the Kingston Hospital is the one that stays open, that for some of the things that they need, they could rent from the Benedictine Hospital. Um, as far as the Burger Commission is concerned, I think they're out of line. And as far as the Health Department is concerned, I think that, that their regs ought to be cut. Thank you very much. Kilio raised uh, 10 points, four of which were about the MSA. So let's talk about the MSA. Many of them were rhetorical, no, no need to address each one, but uh, let's talk about the MSA for a moment. Uh, you want to give us an update on what's going on with that? It's probably the same as the last update. Let's hear it anyway. The MSA stands for Metropolitan Statistical Area. It's a term that is just a, a, an acronym, really, uh, for a a method of reimbursement that determines the level of Medicare reimbursement. It is based on a wage index that is, by design, reflective of the wages paid in that respective area. That was the intent when it was designed in the first place. About nine, ten years ago, I'm not sure uh, which year, there was a political effort to override that and to take in certain areas of the country, which is referred to as the 508 legislation, in which the wage index was artificially changed and expanded. In our case, and in this region's case, it would have, what it did was to expand the New York City wage index, north and south. There were some hospitals in Jersey that received it, but there were also designated counties north of the uh, of, of the city. Dave, I don't mean to interrupt, but if you could just tell us the status of negotiations for okay. us. We have 14 speakers now. Got it, okay. Anyway, the idea was this was artificially expanded. Uh, at the last minute, Ulster County was excluded from that, and it had about nine years ago. Efforts have continued to be made to right that wrong. We continue to do that. And we've had meetings with uh, uh, the uh, deputy director of the CMS, and we're continuing uh, to provide information. Our interest is to someday uh, make that right, but I agree with Attilio. Uh, it is a difficult, politically driven issue, and probably we do not see anything in the foreseeable future as far as any additional development. Uh, the next question was, one of the other questions was whether there are deed restrictions that would prevent Benedictine from becoming a uh, full service hospital that you're aware of. We are not aware of those. We believe that the deeds are all in the name of Benedictine Hospital, but that is a separate entity. It is separate and distinct from the sisters, and Benedictine Hospital is a, an affiliate member under Health Alliance, and Health Alliance would have the ability to uh, use this property. The other point that was raised by Tilio is that there are rumors that the Health Alliance itself is going to dissolve. Is that part of the plan that's going to be proposed to the health, health department under the certificate of need process, or is it indeed something that's being considered? The dissolution of Health Alliance has not been discussed. Obviously, uh, the, the master alignment agreement, which is the document that governs the alliance, um, will need to be amended and changed because we are changing the way we do certain aspects of our business, but we've not discussed or, or do, we do not anticipate um, the dissolution of the alliance. Okay. Well, the next speaker is Susan Murphy. 